Hey, space friends, this week I'm talking about penguins from space. Okay, not penguins from outer space, but actually counting and tracking penguins from space, from satellites in space, by actually looking at images of penguins from outer space and actually being able to track penguins in a much more accurate way. This is a really cool project I learned about when I was in Antarctica. While I was there, I overlapped with a researcher known as Michelle LaRue, had, who has been tracking penguins from space for years, also tracking them by helicopter and plane and by foot. She does a lot of really awesome work, and I really wanted to share this project with all of you. Okay, so how exactly does this work? You can't exactly see an individual penguin from 450 kilometers away in orbit. Maybe one day you can do that, but right now you can't. A lot of the best resolution imagery out there in satellite data that's going over Antarctica right now is around two feet in resolution, meaning one pixel in a satellite image equates to two feet on the ground. Some are getting closer to one foot resolution, but still you can't really pick out an individual penguin from that, especially when they're huddled together. So how exactly do they count penguins from outer space? How they actually find penguins from space? looking for poo. Literally, they comb through satellite imagery of pristine Antarctic snow and ice, looking for brown skid marks on the ice. And if they find really large brown skid marks on the ice, well, there's a penguin colony nearby. That's how you count penguins from space. What scientists are doing is that they're combining these images of penguins and penguin poo from space, combined with actually doing flyovers of penguin colonies, most often emperor penguin colonies. Researchers actually load up into a plane or a helicopter and they fly over penguin colonies that have thousands and thousands of penguins in them and take many photos of those penguins. They then compare the photos that they took from the plane to satellite imagery and based on that they can start to create an algorithm that better identifies how many penguins are in how many pixels from satellite images. So they teach the algorithm essentially about penguins and penguin poo and shadows and all other sorts of stuff so that it can better distinguish what's what and better see the population density in kind of black swatches on the ice next to huge skid marks on the ice. This is actually a lot of work. So when researchers are loading up into a plane or helicopter and taking lots of photos, when they get back from that flyover and go back to McMurdo Station, they combine all of the images that they took together and stitch them together and then begin hand counting the number of penguins in each colony. Big colonies can have thousands and thousands of penguins and so they are hand counting each individual penguin from their photos. So for a large colony, that may take them up to 16 hours of hand counting penguins. That's a lot of work to do some really awesome science. But it's all worth it because what they were able to discover a few years ago when they did this for the first time was that they discovered 595,000 emperor penguins in Antarctica. This was nearly double the amount of known emperor penguins before they used this satellite imagery trick. So by actually using satellites combined with humans on the ground and in the air, they were able to actually increase the number of known emperor penguins in Antarctica, which is really exciting because we really need to know a lot more about the polar landscape. And it's one of the most poorly understood ecosystems in the world. All of this work is really vital to understanding penguin health in Antarctica and keeping track of it, especially during climate change. It's also really vital because you can't put a GPS tag on a penguin. The Antarctic Treaty states that you can't interact with wildlife, and so by remotely being able to do flyovers and use satellite imagery to track penguins, we can keep tabs on our penguin friends and neighbors without bothering them, which is really cool. I'm so happy I got to share this project with all of you. When I first heard about it when I was in Antarctica, I thought it was pretty cool and I couldn't wait to learn more about it. And now I'm happy to actually share it and you can learn more about it too. In the YouTube description below, I will put links to the project and other interesting articles about it. And also there's a shout out to all the really awesome patrons who are helping support videos like this one. If you wanna be an awesome patron and help support videos like this one, head on over to my Patreon campaign where you can get cool stuff and geek out with me there. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.